Welcome back to the Health Longevity Secret Show, and I'm your host, Dr. Robert Lufkin. An essential part of the longevity revolution is getting information about the science out to the public. Today, we look at an important way of doing this. Michael Sawirsky is a recognized documentary filmmaker, TV producer, and marketing expert. He has received multiple Emmy Award nominations and won several Tele Awards and Hermes Awards. His current project, Longevity Hackers, is all about the revolution in longevity that is happening all around us. biggest issue that all of us are facing together is the disease of aging and the finality of death. People for thousands of years have been touting cure aging products that don't really work. People have to understand several things. Number one, the science is real. HVersal X Prize is a global technological competition, $100 million for developing solution to reverse aging. All humans die and most people accept it as a given, but more and more people are beginning to learn that it's not necessarily something that can't be changed. We're not just talking about slowing aging, we're actually about turning back the clock. Things are going to be exponential. A good diet and exercise will help you avoid a lot of disease, but it's truly not enough. If FDA will recognize aging as a disease, it's going to be a massive inflection point for all of us. Metformin's major side effect is living long. People who are aging don't have the patience to wait 10 years for a drug approval. I'm mean, very excited. I think that aging can be cured a lot faster than most people are projecting. The prospect of living up to 200 years is really nothing. And what we're saying there is that people's dogs are going from old dogs to puppies again. In order to be able to treat diseases of aging, we have to understand the cause. You can't really stop aging per se, but we can significantly decelerate the process. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw reversal of aging in every way imaginable. Now we're treating the lifespan itself as somehow unnatural as something that needs to be fixed. Treating aging as a disease takes us in some directions that we should think carefully about and we should worry about. I will be able to live as long as I choose to live. I do believe that we are now in control of our own evolution. And now, please enjoy this conversation with Michael Sawirsky. Hey, Mikhail, welcome to the show. Hey, Dr. Rob, how are you? Thank you so much for the invitation. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about hearing about the film and the work you're doing, but maybe let's just start off and you could maybe tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to be interested in the longevity space. Sure, sounds good. So uh, it all started about um, a decade ago. Um, I was still working as a TV commercial producer uh, in Chicago, and uh, it was a fun career, but um, I was having some moral dilemmas with my work. I was, you know, making commercials for McDonald's and for, you know, all sorts of businesses that did not really align with kind of my ethics and values. And I was trying to find a way to produce more content that would kind of be bring me more uh, fulfillment, personal fulfillment. And uh, it coincided with a time in my life that um, I was going through some health issues. I was uh, 60 pounds overweight. I was uh, um, having issues with my blood pressure, blood sugar, uh, cholesterol, and um, just basically, you know, metabolic disease and uh, pre-diabetic and it was not feeling very good, did not look very good. And I decided it was time to, to do something about it and tried several yo-yo diets, uh, you know, over the years, nothing really worked. I would go on a diet, would lose some weight, then would gain it right back after I, I ended the diet. And finally, I stumbled upon a, a, a book called The China Study um, by, um, and, um, by Dr. Uh, Colin, um, what's his name? 
uh, yeah, the China study. And um, basically that opened my eyes to, um, to the plant-based diet. I started implementing a more plant-based lifestyle and uh, that helped me a lot. I lost uh, 60 pounds over uh, the period of 12 months and all my biomarkers, all my, my, my blood panels went back to normal. My blood pressure went back to normal. And I was kind of sold on the idea of healthy eating, uh, you know, uh, started exercising more, so I had more energy. And I realized how, how important these kind of lifestyle changes are for, for health. So um, at that time, I was also looking for an idea for a documentary. And since I was kind of going down that rabbit hole of, of the plant-based diet, I realized that there weren't that many documentaries about that topic back then. Uh, now there's a bunch, but back then there, there weren't that many. So I decided to produce a documentary about it, which resulted in, uh, in uh, this film right here, Food Choices. Um, it ended up doing really well. It got picked up by Netflix, um, it was featured globally in 190 countries, translated into 20 different languages and uh, stayed on Netflix for two years. Then uh, it's still available on Amazon Prime and iTunes and a, a bunch of other platforms. And that kind of uh, set me off on, on this journey of just doing this full time. Uh, and, you know, I proceeded to making more films about health and diet. My second film, Diet Fiction, was more focused on weight loss. Then uh, Takeout was kind of a mix of an environmental film with, with a health film. And... Um, at some point, a couple of years ago, I, you know, I, I was looking for a new idea for a film, and I was already very interested in the, in the longevity space uh, as a consumer, you know, of, of information and, uh, you know, taking different supplements and uh, following people like Aubrey de Grey and uh, and a few others, and that's when I, I decided to make a film about this topic because it was something that was interesting to me. I kind of wanted to go down that rabbit hole. And, you know, the thing is with, with documentaries, whenever I, I think of a new idea for a documentary, it has to be something that I'm like extremely passionate about because it's, you know, it's a couple of years of my life that we go into, into making a film. So if it's a, a topic that I don't really enjoy, you know, I'm going to get burned out after a few months. So uh, I, I, I realized that with longevity, it's something that I am willing to dedicate a few years to really explore uh, and, and do research and, and find out more about it and, and share with the audience what, what the outcome was from, from, from that research and the compilation of interviews with some of you know, the leading experts in, in, in the longevity space and uh, give people kind of like a bird's eye view on, on what's happening in the, in the longevity space, which I think is pretty exciting. Yeah, it's almost like you, you have a trajectory from metabolic health and diet and these things and, and now to longevity. Do you see these as being related or are they really separate issues in your opinion? You know, uh, the more I go down the, this, the, this rabbit hole of this topic, I, I, I see that everything is interconnected. So definitely diet plays a, a huge role. So does exercise and, and stress management and sleep and mindfulness. I think it's, it's all connected. And uh, as exciting as a lot of these advancements in, in, in drugs and nutraceuticals and stem cells and gene therapies, as exciting as that is, I think if you neglect the basics, I think there's only so much that all these other wonderful therapies, treatments and, and drugs can do, right? So if you eat like crap and if you don't sleep well if you are constantly stressed and don't exercise i think you know there's only so much that these advances will be able to help you so i think it needs to be a combination hmm. yeah what's your take on on longevity i we, we talk different people everybody everybody sort of has a different model in their mind of like why do we age why do we get older what what's causing it is it just the you know the accumulation of damage over the years we're wearing out or or is it something else how do you how do you after talking to all these experts on longevity for your for the movie for the film and everything uh, what have you learned about longevity or what how has it changed your thinking about it 
Yeah, so um, there, there's there's different all these different factors, right, that influence aging. And I think that you know, from what I'm seeing, different groups are trying to tackle different uh, different uh, factors that contribute to aging. Uh, you know, there's things like you know senescent cells and mitochondrial dysfunction and uh, you know inflammation and all, all these other things. Um, and uh, I think that you know, different, it, from what I'm seeing, it's not going to be one solution or one magic pill or one treatment that's going to solve it. I think it's going to be a combination of, of, of therapies, um, drugs and technologies that are going to help uh, humans slow down aging and maybe one, one day even stop it or reverse it. Yeah, yeah, we're certainly seeing that with uh, the chronic diseases, uh, you know, obesity and diabetes and stroke and Alzheimer's and cancer, that there's probably not one pill to reverse those, but it's more a combination of effects, including including lifestyle, like you say. Uh, and I, yeah, I suspect it's probably longevity will probably be a, a similar pattern like that. Um, how have you changed your own personal life after after going through this process? Or you're still in the process, I know, but uh, any uh, any changes you've made in the things you do and all? Yeah, so it, it's been a process. Uh, it's been a process that's been taking, you know, the last decade of constantly, you know, trying new, new things and trying to, you know, tweak my diet or or add new supplements or try, you know, sometimes drugs, things like, like metformin and rapamycin. So I, I'm, I consider myself a, a buy a little bit of a biohacker. So I, I like trying things that are not too risky. Uh, and, um, yeah, I've just been experimenting and, and following tracking my health and tracking my, uh, blood work and my metabolic panels and kind of seeing, what works and what doesn't for me. I, I'm a big believer in, in personalized healthcare. Uh, I don't really believe in the like kind of one size fits all type type of approach. Um, so I, you know, something that might work really well for me might not work that well for another person or might be actually detrimental when it comes to uh, drugs and supplements, especially. So I think that, you know, I, I wish it was, as easy as, you know, just having one solution that work for everybody. But I, I think that, you know, people need to kind of take some of that control into their own hands and not just rely on their doctors that, you know, are not always very well informed about uh, things like longevity and, and aging and diet and, and, and uh, you know, health in general in that, in that regard. So I think that you need to do some experimentation yourself and try things and monitor your health and work with your doctor, of course, but um, kind of take some of that responsibility more into your hands. Yeah, have you, uh, what, what have you found that's worked personally for you? Any of those supplements or any of those approaches that you've experimented with uh, that, that you find valuable for yourself? Uh, you know, understanding that uh, one size doesn't fit all and yeah, what way may work for one person doesn't necessarily work for another person. That's a great, a great approach, I think. Yeah, so you know, it, because I take so many things, it's 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 hard for me to pinpoint one exact thing. Um, I I have been following different uh, longevity protocols from different experts. There's uh, Dr. Sandra Kaufman has one. I've been following kind of her protocol. Uh, I, I noticed, you know, subtle things like increases in energy, maybe a little bit of uh, weight loss and uh, um, cognitively being a little more, more sharp, um, but they're subtle. I, I, I cannot say I noticed anything very dramatic, um, but, you know, at the same time, I mean, as long as I feel good, I think it's, it's probably working because... I used to not feel very good, and now now I feel very good, and uh, my blood work is good. So I, I guess what I'm doing is is working. But uh, yeah, uh, I, I don't know exactly what. I think you know things like nicotinamide riboside and R 
I definitely noticed uh, a boost in energy when I started taking that. Um, I do take uh, metformin. Um, I noticed a little bit of, you know, weight loss with, with that um, and um, maybe a little bit of reduction in inflammation or joint pain. Um, I recently started uh, rapamycin, so I haven't experienced any, any uh, major side effects. So still kind of, kind of waiting and see what happens with that. Um, What's your dose with rapamycin, your dosing regime? Yeah, I believe it's uh, 600 milligrams once a week. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I might be getting yep. the, the, the quantity wrong, but yeah, I think it's one pill of whatever concentration it is uh, that they gave me. Uh, one yeah, probably number. six milligrams, uh, yes. yeah, <laughs> once a week, I bet. Yeah, and, and nobody really knows for human doses with rapamycin because it's an off-label use for, uh, for longevity, but... Uh, what you're saying is certainly in the target range that, that other people have have mentioned uh, that they're using. So that's so. Any others? Any others like acarbos? Um, I have not tried acarbos. Uh, it, it sounds familiar, but uh, mm -hmm. is that something that you recommend? You uh, no, uh, this is not medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> this is educational only. But uh, um, I, I'm presenting at a, a couple of conferences, my area of interest is rapamycin and looking at that, but uh, it's interesting that as dramatic as the or effects of rapamycin are on studies like the ITP, the interventions testing program, where they, you know, they test mice, two groups of mice. Um, when they give rapamycin plus metformin or plus a carbose, they get a greater effect than either one individually. Mm -hmm. So it just sort of underscores how little we know about this space, that there's so many you know, interactions and we're just at the very beginning of knowledge in this, but it's a very exciting time to be, uh, you know, to be involved in the space uh, as well. So what other, what other supplements are you taking? Um, anything else? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Before I get into that, I, I just wanted to mention that uh, my dog is also on uh, metformin and rapamycin. I have a twelve-year-old uh, Labrador, and uh, yeah, we definitely noticed improvements in her. Um, ah. I, I started her on that after interviewing Dr. Matt Camberlain, yeah. in and he gave me the right dose and all that. And um, yeah, we definitely noticed her being more lively and more energetic and going on longer walks. Um, and I mean, 12 years old for a lab, it's, you know, she's, she's old. <laughs> she's... Yeah. Yeah. And just for our audience, uh, Matt Caberline uh, at the university of Washington famously has the dog aging project where uh, individuals around the U S I think it's just the U S now, and maybe in Canada can enroll their dogs in a longevity study and, it's a blinded randomized study. So some will get rapamycin, some won't. Um, and, and then also you can just prescribe it yourself like you're doing, you know, or have it prescribed for you rather, but uh, they're doing some great work up there with those guys. Uh, yeah, amazing what they're doing. Yeah. I got it prescribed for myself and then I just share it with, with my dog. Because <laughs> prescribe it to you, you know, so. Um, uh, uh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, you mentioned uh, Colin Campbell's book, the China study earlier. Um, we'll put the link in the show notes to the book. Um, a lot of a lot of people on the journey to to lifestyle self awareness and making choices about their own lifestyle started with that book. And uh, do you still follow it, or have you have you changed changed course? Uh, on your views since then, how, how has everything evolved after making all these documentaries on the topic and then now longevity? Yeah, so I made, I made some, some small tweaks to my diet. I mean, I still eat primarily a whole food plant-based diet. I would say 90% of my diet is whole food plant-based. Uh, but about a year ago, I had to make some small changes because I was having some uh, digestive issues and after like extensive testing and ultrasounds and uh, uh, all sorts of things, uh, they discovered that I have a sensitivity to uh, 
to gluten. So uh, my diet became even more restrictive. So, you know, I, no more pasta, no more breads, no more, you know, all the things that, that I like, you know, uh, burritos and things like that with the tortillas. So I had to remove a lot of things and it was becoming extremely restrictive. So I added back in eggs into my diet. So that's the only animal product uh, that I consume. Uh, uh -huh. so essentially a whole food plant-based diet plus eggs. Um, another thing that I also have been experimenting lately is trying a more low carb um, approach to a plant-based diet. And that has served me well. Um, I know it does not, not for everybody. Like I think, like I said, each person needs to find something that works for them, but a more, a, a lower carb kind of um, plant-based approach has, has worked well for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that it's, it's what I'm hearing from a lot of our guests and, and what I do myself is, uh, is, uh, sort of avoid the processed foods, which, which uh, means a lot of the carbs or seed oils or grains for that matter. And, um, but I think you, uh, my, my opinion is you can, you can have a healthy nutritional lifestyle going all the way from vegan, which I was for 10 years, all the way to carnivore. And it's possible to be healthy anywhere in that range the key thing is to avoid the processed foods and you can have processed meats or you can have processed plant foods or combinations thereof. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's great. You're, you found that to be so effective for you. Yeah. And I agree with you. I, I used to be a little more dogmatic about the plant-based diet, but uh, over the years I, I realized that, like you said, you know, you can be healthy eating, you know, a, a carnivore diet, you can be healthy eating, you know, a more kind of paleo like diet and uh, or vegetarian or, or vegan, as long as you're including more whole food sources and, and staying away from sugars and, and processed foods. I think that all of those, uh, what we've been seeing, you know, in, in the research is that all of those can be beneficial to people. And I think ultimately, you have to find what works for you. Uh, for me, I like the plant-based approach also because, you know, I, like the ethical aspect of food choices is important to me, like not eating animals. It's something that, you know, uh, it, it's something that's, that plays a role uh, for me. Um, but I, you know, I totally believe that you can be healthy with those other dietary uh, lifestyles as well. Yeah, I, I saw, I agree with you. I saw a great, uh, someone had a quote somewhere that, um, if you avoid eating any foods that were developed in the last hundred years, you'll likely avoid most of the chronic diseases that have become so prevalent in the last hundred years. And the only thing I guess we might add is, is gluten and grains, which go back 10,000 years. But uh, depending on the personality, person, different people have different sensitivities to it. But uh uh, I avoid those things too. And it's just, it, it narrows down the, the target a little bit. That's why I've expanded to include meat again, which I didn't have before, just because for me, I wasn't being as healthy as I wanted to be uh, when I was too, too narrow there. So, but yeah, it's funny because I, I was always a big believer in, 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 in grains as well. And uh, I was an advocate for eating lots of grains and uh, but yeah, I started to see my health deteriorating and, and, uh, you know, having digestive issues, like I said, and uh, finally it turned out it was, it was the grain. So <laughs> we, need to, we need to listen to our bodies and, and, uh, and kind of be a little bit of a detective in a way to figure out, you know, what works and what doesn't for us and try to tweak that diet with, with the help of a you know, good health professional. Uh, to see what what works best and what is more beneficial for our bodies. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great point, and and a lot of um, experts are now making the point that even those of us who are not actually don't have celiac disease, which is you know gluten intolerance, there's probably a spectrum of many people who don't have frank celiac disease or frank gluten intolerance, but they have a degree of inflammation driven by the gluten that they may or may not be aware of, you know, that they may just manifest as other things. And so 
a lot of a lot of people recommend trying, you know, eliminating different types of foods from your from your diet, and that might be dairy. Uh, you know, some people don't do well with dairy, but grains is another whole category that they do as a test. And you know, sometimes you just don't know. You eliminate grains, and wow, I feel better. My bowel disease went away, or my arthritis went away. And uh, every, like you say, we're all different, and there's probably not one solution for all of us. But it's uh, it's so many, uh, you know, many, many different things. Yeah. So, so back to the movie, where are you in the process? Uh, what do you need from the audience or when, when can people watch this? Where can they see it? That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, great question. Uh, uh, we're almost done with the interview process. Uh, we have uh, close to 50 interviews recorded right now. So, uh, lots of content. We're starting the, the we're getting into post production. We're going to be launching a new uh, trailer within the next couple of months. Um, we also including some uh, celebrities in the movie. We recently were able to uh, interview Mark Cuban and uh, Tony Hawk, and uh, we have a few other very interesting um, interviews lined up with uh, very well known uh, personalities that are interested in the longevity space and have interesting uh, opinions about it and experiences. So we're going to be including that. And um, yeah, I think we're still probably a year away from getting the film out. Um, it's kind of a long journey, but we're, we're getting there little by little. <laughs> That's the great thing about longevity or the, or great or not but it's like it's something that we all face and all the celebrities and everybody face uh, if they live long enough that you know eventually we're going to face aging issues and longevity issues and it's certainly going to be on the mind of of basically everyone you know for this uh for this audience uh and everything yeah <laughs> You know, one <clears throat> excuse me. One difficulty that we were, we were having with with the film is that uh, you know the science is changing so quickly, and there's new research coming out all the time. That you know normally we we can finish a film with about uh, you know thirty to thirty five interviews. We're at fifty basically interviews right now because we keep adding you know more for new things come up. Like, okay, we have to feature this. We have to feature that. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been challenging in, in that regard to keep up with the, with the science and the research. Well, yeah, I, I was going to ask you a question about that. I mean, I I'm giving I'm going to be giving some talks coming up on rapamycin and metformin as uh, longevity drugs, and um, one of the things I noticed in these presentations is uh some of them are with animal studies and some of them are with human studies but almost every single animal study that that we cite in the in the presentation there's already a human study underway right now and in 12 months from now <laughs> you know it'll be a completely different story with you know more answers a better understanding more nuanced view of how these how these things work so in your role of trying to like lock in one point in time, it must be really challenging uh, to to do that and and hopefully get the film out as fast as possible uh, just for that reason, because it's, uh, I mean, I've been in med medicine my whole career, obviously, but I, uh, I've never seen anything move as fast as this longevity space. It's just remarkable. The the breakthroughs and the understanding that are happening uh, very, very rapidly. So what what an exciting place to be and what an exciting time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely it is. And I think, you know, we want to make it clear to our audience that, you know, uh, in the film that, you know, people have to go and do their own research because new things come up all the time, new research, new new evidence. So uh, the film, it's a, it will be a good introduction for people interested in the longevity space. But, uh, you know, our goal is to get people excited, get people interested in the space, because I think we all can benefit from it. And, and being informed is important because there's a lot of great things in the pipeline, you know, um, in for the next few years. So I think it's, it's important for more and more people to be um, aware and try to, you know, again, 
I'm not a doctor, it's not medical advice, but maybe, you know, try <laughs> to uh, experiment with some of those things and see if some of them are, could be beneficial or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, and the personal hacking, the, the uh, people, the citizen scientists taking the initiative ourselves to do this, this is also a very powerful tool, like you, you've alluded to, that individuals can make choices in their nutrition, in their lifestyle, supplements, or even some of these prescription drugs with the help of a you know, physician. Um, people can, can uh, really push the envelope um, themselves and the, the the hacking you know from the title of your movie the is a is a powerful tool in this space and we're seeing more and more people just just doing just that and I think uh, we're even seeing some you know breakthroughs or some some discoveries where people are pushing the science by uh, you know doing doing that sort of thing as well so it's it's really exciting. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, you know, at some point, unfortunately, we need to put like a, a cap on, on the contents that, that we cover. Like right now, recently, I, 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 I've been doing some research about 7-alpha estradiol. And uh, that's so fascinating. And I'm like, okay, I, I need to include that. But at some point, I'm just going to have to, you know, stop and just go into the edit room and just finish the film because like new things keep coming up constantly. So it's challenging, but uh, yeah, we're going to try to include uh, the main things that are, you know, current with the with the science by the time we finish the film. Yes, having an alpha estradiol is one of the few uh, in the ITP, the intervention testing program, is one of the darlings of the ones that extended the mice uh, a lifespan along with a carbos and rapamycin and, and all. So be interesting to uh, to have that included as well. Well, what's the best way for people to get a hold of, hold of you, Michael? Um, uh, what, like, what's your website? We'll put it in the show notes down below. But for anybody who's listening to, to this as a podcast only, maybe you could just uh, tell us that way. How can they reach you on social media and your website? Sure. So the best way uh, it would be to go on the film's website, longevityhackers.tv. Um, and uh, we have a, a contact form there. Um, best email to reach me would be uh, info at newrootsfilms.com. And that's my film company. And that's listed on, on the website um, as well, longevityhackers.tv. Well, great. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for spending a, an hour with us today. And I'm, I'm so excited about Longevity Hackers. I can't wait till it comes out. But for now, we'll have to uh, we'll have to deal. We'll live with the trailer, which we'll include in the in the program here. But thanks again so much. We really appreciate the work you're doing. Thank you so much, Dr. Rob. It was a pleasure. No, this is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking of it because of something you have seen here. If you find this to be of value of you, please hit that like button and subscribe to support the work we do on this channel. Also, we take your suggestions and advice very seriously. Please let us know what you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching and we we'll hope to see you next time.